Hi everyone, it's Monday, May 15th, 2017 at 11 o'clock Eastern Time and this is Admissions Live. I'm your host, Nicole Lentini, and on today's broadcast we're talking about our use of technology in our industry and dealing with it when it goes awry, as well as how to prepare ahead of time so that even if your tech fails, you don't. Admissions Live is part of the Higher Ed Live Network. Our episodes offer you direct access to the best and brightest minds in education. Be a part of our live broadcasts by sharing your knowledge. Participate in today's discussion by tweeting using the hashtag higher ed live. All of our episodes are free and easy to access in the video archives at higheredlive.com and oh, or take higher ed live with you or on the go by subscribing to our podcast. Today's episode is made possible by NRCCUA. Admissions Live is sponsored by NRCCUA, the National Research Center for College and University Admissions. NRCCUA combines direct-to-student outreach with digital marketing with an approach that is 100% backed by data-driven insights and research. Speaking of data and insights, NRCCUA invites you to join them and 400 of your closest friends at the 2017 EduVentures Summit taking place June 7th through 9th in Boston at the amazing Intercontinental Boston Waterfront Hotel. Visit eduventures, E-D-U-V-E-N-T-U-R-E-S dot com, eduventures, for the full program agenda and registration. Higher Ed Live is produced by M. Stoner, a digital first agency committed to tailored solutions that drive real results. Trusted by thousands of higher ed professionals, M. Stoner's webinars are jam-packed with timely, strategic, and actionable knowledge. Check out their library of on-demand content from digital storytelling to myth-busting websites. We're tweeting a link out right now. So without further ado, I'm very excited to welcome my guest, um, Ross Wolfson, who uh, joins me from the high school side, as a matter of fact. So Ross, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your background in education and in technology? Sure, thanks, Nicole, for having me today. I'm uh, really excited to be here. Um, so I've been a school counselor for close to 15 years. Um, started out in New York, which is where I grew up. Um, and my first time as a full-time counselor was actually in rural New Hampshire. I uh, spent a little bit of time in uh, Dedham, Massachusetts, and now I'm at Westboro High School where I'm the school counseling department head. Uh, I've been here for about three years. Um, from, from the technology end, it's something that I've really enjoyed uh, working in and learning more about. I, I could think back to, I suppose, uh, a couple things that have really led me to, to the usage that I've had with technology. And um, I took some classes in college where I was doing web design and learning HTML, and that got me started with uh, some of that aspect of it. Um, when I was out of college, I was a little bit of a self-taught Excel person. I was working at a company doing some accounting and uh, using a book called How to Keep Score in Business, which was written in the 70s and asked you to take out graph paper and keep a ledger. Um, I thought, you know what, I could probably use this to teach myself Microsoft Excel. And that uh, is something that I use, uh, that along with Google Sheets, uh, really uh, something that's prevalent in my work now as well. Um, and more recently, I attended a Google Apps for Education conference a couple of years ago, which really gave me a lot of insight into just the possibilities that you can use with technology. Um, so I'm always learning something new, always trying something new, uh, failing often and regrouping and uh, seeing how I can make things work better for, for my practice and, and the other people that I work with. Excellent. Yeah, I think you make a good point, too. I mean, I think every year there's just been new technological solutions that come out that you kind of got to acclimate yourself with and, and fail with sometimes. And um, a lot of them are out there to help us in our industry. But I think there's a lot of hiccups that come along the way with them. Um, so I'm grateful for people like you on the other side of the desk from us that, you know, understand when we are dealing with some tech woes and also um, dealing with some yourself, but also prepared to kind of have that relationship of being able to talk through these tech woes that we have. So I'm excited to represent both sides of the desk with our show today. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, quickly before I get to the questions, just as a reminder to viewers, don't hesitate to ask questions using the hashtag HigherEdLive, um, and I'll do my best to answer your questions, or ask the questions rather to Ross for him to answer uh, as they come in. Um, but I do have a question, a few questions to start with on my own first. Um, but before I get into those two, I want to encourage viewer participation, and I know Ross will be on board with this as well. So um, if you've dealt with some tech woes in the past and you want to share them with us, um, please also share those using the hashtag Higher Ed Live. Uh, we're going to share some of our own, but we would love to hear about some of yours as well as how you dealt with them. Um, or, you know, if it was kind of a mess with the fallout of all that was, but really we want to hear about how you dealt with 
uh, tech was in your experience. But um, Ross, I'm excited to hear some kind of horror stories, but also your your redemption from some of the tech woes that you've had. So um, w will you uh, share a few examples that you've had to deal with? Sure. I, I think I could lead right off with probably the, the biggest tech nightmare I ever had come true. Um, last fall, this past fall, I was uh, selected along with uh, presentation partner uh, Tyler Wentworth from UNH to do a presentation at the NACAC conference. Uh, it was the first time I had ever attended, and I was grateful to be selected to uh, participate and present. And we were doing a tech lab presentation on uh, using video to increase engagement. And I, I need to give a, a big shout out to the tech folks at NACAC for helping us uh, troubleshoot both before the presentation and, and right before it and during it a little bit. Um, they were very helpful in helping us get set up. One of the challenges was that we were using video and we were going to be playing a lot of things live off of YouTube um, and we're using, um, instead of a PowerPoint, which is static and doesn't require uh, online capabilities, we're using a Google slide program or a Google slide presentation. So uh, there were a lot of things that we needed to work out and uh, we, we were going through a lot of the details and making sure everything was working and half an hour before the presentation, we were getting up there and, and hooking in uh, my computer to make sure the sound was coming through and the video was working and everything was set. And then right before the presentation began, my computer stopped producing sound <laughs> at all. And so we were stuck giving a video presentation without any audio um, and really didn't know what to do about that at first. So, uh, you know, we're try trying to figure out, all right, is there another computer that we can hook into it? But it wasn't uh, Wi-Fi enabled, so we weren't able to go online and, and show everything that we were doing. And it got to the point where, you know what, people were there, they were ready to watch the presentation. Um, and so we just kind of started. Um, and, you know, I started giving the intro and, and explaining what we were planning on, on doing. And, and Tyler was great also. One of the tips uh, that he had given during the presentation that was already planned was about how when you're producing videos, so many people watch videos without the audio on in the first place. So if you can imagine, um, you know, standing in your kitchen making dinner maybe and, you, and you're, you know, scrolling through your Facebook feed and some of the videos are going live, you're probably not turning the sound on. And so it's really effective if you can make a video that works without sound. So here we were without sound trying to produce this presentation. Um, it, it was very interesting. One of the things that I had attempted to do, one of the videos we were showing right at the beginning was uh, really just a person off camera talking. And the very end had a little bit of action, but the, present, the video was about what the person was saying, not about what the person was doing. And it was an effective thing that I wanted to try to show. So instead of, you know, obviously showing the sound with it, I tried to narrate what the person was saying uh, for this video. And uh, I don't really know how well that went, but um, I had almost done that once a couple years earlier when we tried to show that video at a presentation at our high school where Wi-Fi was not working. Last minute, the Wi-Fi started and we were able to show the video. Uh, so I already kind of had in my head, I could probably narrate this video if I needed to. And we did. Um, one, of the, one of the other troubleshooting things that we tried, and it worked okay, um, was I tried to sync my cell phone with the video on the computer. So we had the video playing on the big screen, and I held the microphone up to the speaker on my cell phone to try to get some sound from the video. So I think we are able to do that twice, and we are off a little bit on timing. Um, but that was something else that we tried to do. But all in all, you know, we got good feedback on the presentation, but it was just one of those things where you know, you're going to show videos and without the sound, it's just, it's not going to work the same way that you want to. But, but we did it. It was a good experience. I was, I was glad to have it and learn a lot from it afterwards. Awesome. Yeah, those are, I, I like that, it, you know, you kind of could find the silver lining in some of those, especially the, you know, the, uh, the teaching moment, the teachable moment with Tyler kind of mentioning that, well, you know, you want your videos to still be effective without the sound is kind of a nice thing to be able to have found in all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I want to tell our viewers too, don't worry, we're not going to just share these tech quotes. We're also going to give you some tips on how to kind of find the redemption like we, like uh, Ross and I both have in some of our stories. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. 
so maybe I'll hop in with some of my own, and if you want to share any others, yours you can have, you can share. But um, mine kind of spans some different spaces. Um, one of them being uh, in the world of Twitter. I don't know how many uh, colleges or high schools out there. Probably less on the secondary side. I'm guessing more on the college side uh, may find that they have uh, student teams that are running their social accounts or be are participating in their social accounts in some sense, whether that be an intern or a student ambassador or um, some somebody just kind of helping to support you and putting content out there and in general that works pretty effectively you know you're putting content out there that's meaningful to your students um, that's meaningful to current students they're thinking really creatively about how to use new tools out there so it's great um, but uh, we had a student who um, accidentally thought that she was logged into her personal account and she was logged into the college college's account and put out some um, not ideal content that was out there and some uh, unfavorable, you know, just some unfavorable swear words that we wouldn't have wanted to be sharing on the uh, the institution's account. So um, it was a learning experience for sure. It was one that I, um, now looking back, can think of really good ways to prep for that. And we can talk about that a little bit later when we talk about some tips and tricks. Um, we dealt with it in the moment by, uh, as soon as I found out about what had happened, topping on there, um, deleting it and encouraging all of our students to uh, to unconnect their accounts from the college's account but it was a real learning experience for me to not be thinking ahead of what if this happens and how do I prevent something like this from happening uh, one other tech experience that I want to share um, it's funny because we are actively doing this broadcast within Google Hangouts and Google Hangout has been one of my favorite and least favorite tech tools out there um, because uh, it can be a bit unpredictable at times. Sometimes Google doesn't want to cooperate and not go broad, uh, go, not go live with the broadcast at all, as I've had happen before. Um, but Google Hangouts just is interesting in its interest in cooperating and not cooperating at times. And so um, I've had broadcasts that. Um, like I said, didn't go live at all. I've had broadcasts that had to go live late because of the connectivity issues. Uh, I've had audio issues. I mean, you name it, it's probably happened with Google Hangouts at some point in time. Um, so uh, I think what's what I've been able to do is deal with those in the moment, putting you know content out there if we're about to go live and our viewers are expecting it, whether here on Admissions Live or um, institutionally for Champlain, what the school that I work with, um, putting it out there that we're doing what we can to make the tech function, um, trying to address questions that students would have asked in that broadcast, um, putting that out there in our other social spaces. Um, and doing what we can to get up and running. Um, I'm lucky that I have wonderful students that work in our office. And there was one point in time with the Google Hangout that wasn't working that I had four different students simultaneously doing work to help me kind of troubleshoot it um, and put content out there. So uh, I'll talk a little bit more in our tips and tricks about uh, some of those things and ways to prep for that ahead of time. But um, those were some of my tech woes. Did you have any others you wanted to share, Ross? I could, I could actually share a Google Hangouts uh, tech will. Um, and, and I'll preface this by saying Google Hangouts really is awesome. If you've never tried this, um, give it a shot. It's a great way to communicate with people or, or set up a, a presentation. And uh, I'm thinking back to a couple years ago, I was uh, working with another counselor in Massachusetts uh, named Ashley McPherson. We did a presentation at the MASCA conference on using social media for school counselors. And one of the things that we wanted to do was a live Google Hangout for the about 100 or so people that were in the audience. And uh, we had lined up five counselors from around the country and um, one in Canada. And we were going to do a live Google Hangout. Uh, it wasn't an on-air Hangout, just a one that we were going to be broadcasting from my computer. And uh, one of the tips that we're going to share later, um, which we can share now, is make sure you try things out ahead of time before you go with the presentation or however you're planning it. I had not figured out, I thought I did, but I had not figured out how to send the correct link for people to log into the call. So I was trying to go live with this Google Hangout and I couldn't get anybody onto the call. And I didn't know what was wrong. And luckily, one of the people that was on the panel, uh, Jeremy Goldman from Maryland, called me on my cell phone and started a brand new Google Hangout and everybody got connected into that. So again, using my cell phone, we ended up hooking the projector up to that, and we were able to do a, a Google Hangout through that. So uh, Jeremy came through in, in that one, um, but definitely try things out ahead of time and try Google Hangouts, even though there are some, some stories that 
uh, are challenging, it, it really does work well. Absolutely, and I didn't mean to trash poor Google Hangout. I mean, <laughs> well, I was just thinking as soon as I was going to share my story, people might wonder about it. But definitely a, a positive plug for Google Hangouts. No, totally, and and I think it is. It's funny because it can be so helpful, but it can be uh, uncooperative at best. You really need to re be ready for everything. And uh, and when we get into our tips, I'll talk a little bit about you know like really troubleshooting and you know preparing for how to troubleshoot anything um, in the moment, but also best ways to prep ahead of time. Um, and and I'm excited to talk about the tips to prep ahead of time. But I, you know, do you have any tips for viewers of how to kind of deal with stuff in the moment? I mean, I think you shared some good examples of it, but what what are your kind of uh, best tips as far as okay, something is going terribly with tech. How do I, you know, how do you, what, what are the steps to kind of hand, preparing to handle that? Well, I, I think one, and it's really kind of general and, and probably simpler and, and a little bit more um, negative thinking than it really is, is expect that something is going to go wrong. Um, if you go into it thinking it's all going to be perfect and then some little thing happens that kind of throws you off base you may not be prepared for that you may not know what to do in that moment so if you go into it thinking it's possible something is going to go wrong and just kind of you know planning ahead if, if something like this happens or something like that happens um you're going to be more confident you're going to be in a better position to handle it instead of freezing um you know a, a quick example of that is you even something as as low tech as um earlier this year i couldn't get a microphone to, to, to go on and the speakers to work in our auditorium. And it, we finally got it working two minutes before the presentation, but if it wasn't gonna work, I knew I was gonna still start on time. I was just not gonna use a microphone. Um, so I wasn't too, too worried about it, even though we were scrambling right at the beginning. So uh, even something like that, you know, put yourself in a position where if something does go wrong, it doesn't make you freeze, that you're able to continue doing what it is that you need to be doing really really great advice and and in the kind of I think doing that practice doing that kind of exercise prepares you to be calm in the moment too so you already kind of know what to expect of what might go wrong and you're prepared for it and you can just say oh okay you know I thought through this this is this is how I'm gonna handle this and you can kind of go right into it without even hesitating yeah uh, um, Oh my gosh, I was going to ask another question too related to that. I had a good point and I'm going to come back to it because I can't quite recall it right now, but I think that's great advice in general. Oh, I know what it was. There we go. Um, so you're making me think of the way to that we should really be thinking as an institution as well through crisis communication, um, mm -hmm. both in both sides of the desk. You know, you don't want to have to be thinking about um, how to handle a, a situation in the moment, you really should have kind of a, an idea of what steps we need to take ahead of time. So if X happens, Y will happen and Z will be notified or whatever that step looks like. And I think even in smaller tech things and things in your in our world in general, but especially when it comes to tech, while it may not still be crisis communication necessarily, it's still really important to think of, okay, these are things that may or may not happen what do, how do I handle those things, like you said, and be prepared of, okay, I can still go on time, or I will just use this instead, or I'll take this step and that step, or I'll switch this order, whatever the case might be. Um, that's always a smart idea to be prepared for those things ahead of time so that you don't panic in the moment and you know what the next steps are. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so I am keeping an eye out on Twitter. I don't think anybody has shared any examples or questions yet, but I want to remind our viewers um, to use the hashtag Higher Ed Live. If you have any questions or just want to share your own tech woes that you experienced, um, feel free to share them with us. But um, so we talked about some of our own tech experiences and crises and woes. Um, but let's talk about, you know, we talked about in the moment dealing with them, but um, we kind of already talked about a few of the points actually of how to handle things ahead of time. You know, a big piece, like you said, is planning for things to fail. And as we talked about how that can give you that preparation, that confidence and that sense of mind to prepare for when things actually do go wrong, um, which I think is a great example. So do you have, um, Anything else to share about that tip or what other, you know, let's get into some other tips that you'd like to share with our viewers. Sure. So I think for, for people that like using technology, it sometimes can be natural to, to go towards using technology as a solution for something. And that's, you know, when, when I talk to people about my own technology use, it's not about 
I found this great tool, I'm going to use this. It's, I have this problem or I have this situation that I want to try to figure out and maybe this technology tool can help solve this issue. Sometimes it's also best not to use a technology tool. Um, and so the, the, the tip I give, which is kind of ironic, is use paper sometimes. Um, and an example of that is uh, we, we have a survey that we ask our uh, rising ninth graders and their parents to fill out before they begin high school. And for the first two years that I was here, we had this uh, online survey. We'd send a link out and people, we'd ask people to fill it out uh, ahead of time online. And the response rate really wasn't that great. Um, but years ago, before I had come to the school, the survey was done on paper. So we converted back to a paper survey for this past year, and the response rate was much higher. Um, students were bringing it in with them to orientation, and all of a sudden we had a lot more information. So, you know, in retrospect, it kind of was a technology fail because we weren't getting the response that we really wanted. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, the same kind of happened at a, a presentations for parents a couple years ago. We had set up an online form first for people to ask questions afterwards and uh, give us their feedback, and we got very low responses. But as soon as we shifted to a half sheet of paper, please write down one or two questions that you have and leave them in a box for us. We were able to go through those questions. We got a lot more people asking things. We were able to send responses out, um, and that worked a lot better. So, um, you know, obviously it's not just about paper, but, you know, try to figure out is technology or is this tool really the right solution for what it is that you're trying to do. Absolutely, yeah. Is it really going to help us or is it only going to make things more complicated or confusing or, yeah. Um, actually, you made me think of a really good example of that that just happened this upcoming weekend. And luckily, this issue didn't happen, but I was grateful that we were prepared for it. So uh, we just had commencement exercises this weekend. Um, and it was the first year that they were using uh, an online system that you could order tickets. And they were it was the first time that they were using scanners. And so uh, our team is awesome. They were prepared. They told our whole personnel, kind of commencement personnel team, they said, you know, this is this is a system that we that we have. It may or may not work the way that we want it to. We're going to train you how to use it, but if things don't work, this is how we're going to proceed. And so they're prepared that, you know, if they could scan in the tickets, great. And if not, they were going to just take the paper tickets as they do every year. So I think it was good that they had sort of the high tech, low tech solution and they were prepared to just default back to the way that we've always done it if the tech solution didn't work. So good example of kind of both of those, uh, both of those great tips kind of combined into one. Sure. So yeah. I think another, oh, I was going to say an, another tip, um, and you can probably tell from some of the things that we've been talking about already, is um, when you're getting ready to, to do something, especially if it's a presentation or you're going to be delivering information, make sure that if technology is a part of it, um, you, know, you know your stuff, that you're able to explain what you're trying to say without the technology, or you know different ways of getting your message across. Because if for one reason or another, the technology does fail, you still want to be able to get that information to your audience. Um, an example I can think of for that, we uh, do career exploration uh, curriculum with our students, and two days before I was going to be doing a classroom presentation, the program that we were using stopped working. And our whole, our whole lesson was really built around that particular program. So uh, luckily, I had about two days to think about what to do. But there, this is a topic that you know I've worked on and, and given lessons on uh, often in the past. So the fact that this particular technology wasn't going to be available, I was able to search out other things, and still, it end, you know it was different, but it was still effective, and we were able to get the information that we wanted to with the, with the students. And in some cases there were parts that were even more engaging for the students because I had to ship things around a little bit uh, on the fly. So it was, it was a little, it was a little looser, a little bit less scripted and, and I like doing that sometimes. So, um, but the, because I was able to really wrap my head around the topic beforehand, I was able to adapt when the challenges came up. That's great. Yeah. And that's, I can't think of anything worse than, you know, when you need that technology to actually give you information that you need to actively be utilizing in your presentation or whatever. So that's a really, really good idea. And I love the fact that it actually helped you to find some, some even more engaging content that you probably wouldn't have found otherwise if you had to rely solely on the tag. Yeah. Um, awesome. So what, what other tips do you have for us? 
Oh gosh, I think just being being adaptable, being creative, um, coming up with different ways to to do things. Um, you know, when, when you're if you're the type of person that's going to look towards technology as a as something to find a solution for, keep in mind that you probably can do just about anything that you need to do with technology. Um, so if you have a question, you're trying to figure something out, talk to other people, um, see what they've done in the past to, to try to solve something. Or um, something I did recently, I, I went and saw one of our computer science teachers to help me figure out a, a problem that I was having with, uh, with a, a spreadsheet program that I was trying to run. And, and by working the two of us together, we were able to figure it out. Um, and it helped me do something much more efficiently than I would have uh, been doing in the past. So that was really good. Um, but you know, come up with ideas and look, you know, t take a step back, look at the big picture of what it is that you're trying to do and try to think, could I solve it this way? Could I solve it that way? Um, and expect that if you have either yourself or other people who have uh, technology experience, ask them and see if maybe there is a solution or a way that you can go about it. Um, another thing to do is just go onto some online forums and post your question. I've gotten into the habit of just typing out my question into a search bar and seeing what comes up. And usually within the first two or three uh, search response, search results, I'm finding information that is, that is helpful, or even I'm finding information I wasn't expecting to find, which becomes helpful. And um, then if, you, if you're adaptable, you can take it in a different direction than you were planning on initially. Absolutely. That's really, really good um, advice and thoughts about that. And I think that is, it's a nice thing is that part of the beauty of technology in the world that we live in now is it does make us inter more interconnected and um, able to reach out to our colleagues. And I'm thinking of, you know, even things that I've posted in Facebook groups that have been like, I'm dealing with this issue. Can somebody help me? You know, whether it be the college admission counselor group or um, one of my local, you know, our, our local um, ACAC is NEACAC, you know, posting in that group or posting in um, some other web related groups that I'm in, you know, there's, a, it's so helpful to know that there's a broader web of professionals out there. And I don't think anybody should be hesitant to reach out to them. Um, I think also talking to other members of your team, you know, and just seeing who has experience in these things, who can help you with these things. And um, that's advice that can be spread from, you know, top to bottom of the hierarchy within higher ed and within secondary ed, you know, to be um, utilizing each other's skills and knowledge and, and going out there to others out there um, in the world as well. Um, I'm also thinking of just talking to somebody, you know, if you got an idea for something from somebody, you know, connecting with them and chatting with them about the issues that they might have faced. So um, good example. And I feel like I give a shout out to my on every few episodes, it's every few broadcasts, it seems, but my own cloud, you know, she was the one who inspired me to do um, Google Hangouts for our incoming students. And as I prepared to do those, and as I kind of went through the ups and downs of those, I reached out to her all the time and said, I'm running into this, or how did you deal with that? And really was able to rely on her um, to help me navigate that. So I, I love the fact that you're saying, you know, kind of reach out there, be adaptable, but also kind of utilize others' knowledge as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I would even I would even add into that a, a great place to find people who may have some technology experience are going to be in in technological areas like social media. Um, you know, if you're a school counselor or a higher ed professional, uh, looking on Twitter, looking on Facebook, and and posting some of those questions. Um, something that I've gotten into the habit of our um, student information system, where we keep records of uh, students. A lot of high schools use the program and every once in a while people post questions. Are there any users of this program out there? I have a question and I'm always uh, writing answers to questions about the, the student information system if I happen to know how it works and you know try to be helpful with that. I think there are a lot of people out there that have knowledge that are willing to share as long as you're asking the questions and you have people that are right in it doing the work that you're looking to do at your fingertips. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think one other thing that um, we haven't necessarily had in our tips and tricks ahead of time that we were preparing for, but something that's kind of coming to mind too, is being comfortable with owning up to it when things are not maybe working the way that, you know, is ideal. I mean, not, you know, making a huge ordeal over it necessarily, but but being transparent and saying, you know, the, the technology is being a little bit cranky, but this is the way, you know, showing that, yes, this is happening, but we have, we, we are prepared to be able to move forward from that, whether that be, you know, things as simple as, you know, um, 
any of our systems not working or uh, Google Hangouts being cranky or anything all the way through to, you know, I know there's universities out there that have sent emails, you know, on accident and that's a terrible tech woe to have to deal with and a terrible um, data thing to have to deal with. And um, being prepared to talk about what happened and how we're trying to deal with, you know, how you're trying to deal with it all. Um, I think people understand that, you know, that things happen sometimes they're still going to be angry about it, but being able to own up to what has happened and being able, being prepared to deal with it, ASAP is a huge, huge, huge thing that we should always be thinking about anytime we're relying on any kind of tech. Um, so, just one other thing that I wanted to throw out there. Um, but did you have any other kind of advice or tips for us, Ross, as we sort of draw to a close here? Um, don't be afraid to fail. Try try new things. Expect that they're going to affect to, that that they're not going to work the first time through, and and look at it as something to solve for yourself. Um, I you know for myself I keep a, a cheat sheet of uh, different Excel formulas, for instance, that I've figured out over time either through asking or trial and error, and they're ones that you know for I'll use once a year when I'm trying to compile some data for something, and I'm able to go back to it. I don't have to remember it off the top of my mind, but I can go back. So, you know, if there are things that you've tried that, you know, work or maybe they don't work, keep some notes for yourself that you can refer back to uh, in the future. I think that's really important. Um, mute your phone. My phone is <laughs> that You can do that also. Um, but I think that, you know, just, just trying new things and seeing maybe this is something that could get, be, that could be helpful and not to be able, uh, not, not to fall into the trap of thinking, this is never going to work, I'm not going to be able to figure it out. Um, but also just kind of echoing what you were saying about, um, you know, it not always going the way that you need to and, and being able to own it and saying, you know what, maybe this didn't work the way that, that I had intended and maybe we're going to shift to do something else uh, the next time. Um, I know that's something that, you know, I, I have personally had to work on. Um, because, you know, coming into uh, different things, I think, all right, technology is going to help me, and, and it doesn't always. And it's not always set up the way that you that you want it to be. And it's okay for it not to work, and it's okay not to use technology um, for, for different things. So, you know, if you're able to own the process from start to finish as you're going through, know that it's going to be fine. And if it's not fine, it's still going to be fine. You're still going to move forward with it um, and figure out another way to, to get to where you need to be. I think that's excellent advice. And I think that's so important too, that like, you know, we, we can't just stay stagnant in doing the way that we've always done things. We should be looking at these bits of technology out there and different um, solutions and different tools and trying to try new things because we may stumble upon something amazing. You know, I think of, you know, Seth O'Dell way back when he started Higher Lab in the first place, you know, and, and the beauty that came of it. And that was a new thing and it was an exciting thing. And, um, you know, seeing what this has become and that helped by, you know, different individuals being involved in this process along the way and I'm thinking of things that we do in our institution that um, utilize technology that are so cool and have been so successful like great example of that actually that I'm excited to see us use again last year we tried out Facebook live um, to do a, a chat before orientation with the orientation leaders and that was a little scary and that was a little intimidating and we weren't sure how well it was gonna work and it was awesome and it got great participation so you know don't be afraid just be prepared like we said utilize some of these tips be prepared you know have some backup plans and things um, but I love the fact that you said that because we can't just be scared that tech may or may not work we should be excited to embrace it yeah. Yeah. any any parting thoughts before we uh, say goodbye to our viewers I think of, I feel like I've kind of said it all you know there's don't Try not to be intimidated by technology if you're if you're a novice. And for those of you that consider yourselves experts, remember that um, not everybody is an expert. And as you're talking about things, make sure you're you're in a place where you can talk about them as um, as simply as you can, so that people um, understand what it is that you're trying to do. Sometimes, and when you when you're using uh, specific language uh, about technology. Uh, sometimes people aren't really sure what it is that you're talking about. So keep the language simple, certainly. Um, and the, again, that's something over time I have also had to, to work on myself. But um, so I, I suppose that's maybe my last parting tip. But yeah, don't don't be afraid of technology. You can do almost anything that you want to with it to help you in, in your professional goals. 
and what you're trying to do. Awesome. That's a great tip. But actually, it's funny that you say that because I remember the first time when uh, one of my VP and my director were both like, so what exactly is Google Hangouts and what are we doing here? So it's a really, really good point. Thank you for mentioning that. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank you. I, I love your your optimism with all of this and your advice. And I think people can learn a lot from you. And remember, you're on Twitter as well, right? I am. I'm not as active as I used to be, but I am on Twitter. I'm at, uh, at R.A. Wolfson. Um, and feel free to reach out if you ever have tech questions or school counseling questions. Or I'm always happy to connect with uh, people from other high schools or, or colleges just to, you know, learn more from one another. So. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much, Ross, for joining us today. Um, thank you for having wonderful me. My pleasure, and uh, thank you as always to our program sponsors, NRCCUA and M. Stoner. Uh, once again, I'm Nicole Lentini, and I will see you all next month. Thank you.